Welcome, and let's go ahead and get started with our workshop. Thank you for joining us. We are looking forward to sharing our experiences with you today, but even more than that, we're looking forward to hearing from you. My name is Jennifer Didlow, and I have both an undergraduate and a graduate degree in mechanical engineering. My undergraduate degree is from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and my master's degree is from right here, Cal State Long Beach. I have had the opportunity to have a near 30 year career in energy and infrastructure, and it has been an amazing ride. And to think that it all started with my first job out of college, crawling around an electricity producing power plant owned by Southern California Edison at the time. First, let me start by saying congratulations to you for taking the huge and important step of pursuing a college degree from the College of Engineering at this amazing university. And also let me say, congratulations for having the courage to pursue a path that will not always be easy, but it will always be worth your effort. We have all come here today. We've come here today bringing our own unique set of experiences. That uniqueness though is literally the reason why diversity is imperative. Teams comprised of people with varied backgrounds, experience levels, and yes, gender are more productive. They're more innovative, creative, and resilient. The decision-making of these teams is superior in every way and their results for problems solved are broader and more inclusive. So it is no surprise that these teams have better bottom line results by more than 35% according to Harvard Business School, McKinsey Consultants, and many other experts in the field. So while we are all each unique, we are also bound together by a common desire to do meaningful and interesting and challenging work that will make a difference by solving big and small problems of tomorrow. Today, we want to inspire you. We want to engage you with successful women, and we want you to have the opportunity to ask questions, share your thoughts, get connected with fellow peers, and faculty of the College of Engineering and introduce our group of successful women, each with an engineering or computer science background. The group is called 100 Plus Women Strong right here at Cal State Long Beach. You will have an opportunity to hear from President Connolly and Dean Bradley Maples about Cal State's continued commitment to increasing diversity. You will also have a chance to hear from a dynamic vice president from Shell, Sydney Kimball, about her career path and then you'll have an opportunity in a small group discussion to hear from and share with some amazingly accomplished women with careers that started as engineers and computer scientists. You are our next set of problem solvers, female voices and the bridges and ladders for the next generation. You are our future and we are so excited to connect with you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tracy Bradley Maples, the interim Dean of the College of Engineering who is a tireless advocate for increasing diversity in engineering and computer science. She holds a doctorate in information and computer science and before being named as interim dean in early 2020, she taught computer science and also oversaw the Engineering Student Success Center as the associate dean of academic programs. And I have personally witnessed her commitment to student success. With that, Dr. Maples, it's all yours. Thank you, Jennifer, for those kind words. And welcome, everyone. The College of Engineering is very proud to be presenting its first ever Women in Engineering workshop. We hope this is the first of many events of this type to come. This event is particularly important to me personally because I was a STEM major. I started my college studies as a math major and moved to computer science. And I clearly remember the challenges of attending classes where I was one of only two or three women and being the only woman on project teams. In fact, throughout all my years of study, working on my bachelor's, master's, and PhD, I had only one woman as a professor and a role model in a major class. And while we know that engineering and computer science have traditionally been male-dominated fields, there have always been exceptional women who make an impact. From Admiral Grace Hopper to current female engineering leaders like Kimberly Bryant, who started Black Girls Code, women make critical contributions, essential contributions to the fields of engineering and computer science. And never has there been a need for more creative thinking to solve the world's problems. We need more engineers, not only female engineers, but diversity in our engineers to solve the challenging problems facing our planet. 
Fortunately, the number of women interested in studying engineering and computing is growing. Women now represent 1,000 of the college's 5,000 engineering students. And I'm pleased to share that the college is committed to continuing to increase the number of female faculty as well. But this must be only the beginning. We need to support those of you who have chosen this career path. As a college, we want to provide you with the tools you need to succeed, not only for your studies here at CSULB, but for your future career. And that is why I'm delighted to have so many successful women engineers from industry here today to share their personal experiences with you. They have tremendous short stories to share, and I am grateful that they're willing to give of their time and talents to help the next gen generation of women engineers and computer scientists. We're also fortunate to have so many of our female faculty in attendance and members of the 100 plus Women's Strong Steering Committee who have made this event possible. Today is a wonderful opportunity for you to make connections and expand your perspectives, as well as to reinforce your membership in this vibrant community of future female engineers. And now it is my pleasure to introduce CSULB President, Dr. Jane Close Connolly. Dr. Connolly, the first woman to be appointed permanent president of Cal State Long Beach and the university's seventh president overall, has been a champion of equity and inclusion throughout her career. At Cal State Long Beach, she has fostered a welcoming and inclusive environment that inspires and supports the success of every member of the campus community. During her seven year tenure as president, graduation rates for all economic and ethnic groups have improved and equity gaps are closing. Now, please welcome President Jane Close Connolly. Thank you so much, Dean Nip Maples, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be part of this really important and inspiring event and excited to see so many students, faculty, partners, mentors, and friends in attendance today. So thank you all for your time and your enthusiastic participation. A question I'm often asked, uh, and maybe because I'm the first woman um, president, is how would you describe your role as president of Cal State Long Beach? You know, it's a big question and one that I could answer at great length and in a variety of ways. But for me, uh, it really boils down to this. My role as president is to create environments that enable people to thrive. I've said before that all human beings have some plant-like features. Now you may not agree with that, but I, I think it's true. We grow as humans best when we are planted in contexts that are rich in opportunities, fair, equitable, supportive, and creative. So I see my most important job as removing barriers to success and adding to the richness of possibilities available to all students, faculty, and staff on our campus. You know, growing up in the Bronx in a working class family with little in the way of formal education and the granddaughter of immigrants, and then being appointed the first female president of Cal State Long Beach, um, that was quite a big step. I know from experience what opportunity and equity can do when you come from a background that is non-traditional uh, for a college student or for a college student in a specialized program like engineering that builds on the skills and awareness, awareness is um, developed in elementary and high schools. Our university lead, our university and leaders like Dr. Maples are staunchly committed to promoting interest and engagement in science studies and in creating opportunities and environments that promote real progress in expanding opportunities for the next generation of female engineers who will design and implement practical solutions to a wide range of social problems. I would like to add, I have two, I have three nieces who are engineers. So I'm, I'm, I'm really part of this uh, uh, cheerleading group. Uh, but Dr. Maple's group, uh, uh, efforts uh, have really shown, uh, really borne fruit. Uh, the results have been truly remarkable. Women now make up nearly 20% of bench, uh, beach engineering students. This is significant progress, but I know we're not done yet. The college aims to boost the percentage of female engineers to 25% by 2025 and is working hard on strategies to increase retention uh, female faculty. On that note, I'd like to take a moment to recognize uh, Associate Dean and Professor uh, Antonella 
Shortino, who joined our civil engineering and construction engineering management department in 2004 and was recently appointed as the Associate Dean of Academic Programs. So congratulations, Associate Dean Shortino, and thank you for your extraordinary dedication to our engineering students. I'd also like to thank our wonderful keynote speaker, Cindy Kimball, who comes to us from Shell Corporation, you heard about her a moment ago, and our conference organizers, the members of the 100 Plus Women Strong Steering Committee, Diane Asis, Dorothy ben Benvenisti, um, Dana Cabell, Donna Chamberlain, Jan Coyne-Jones, Holly Craig, Jennifer Didlow, Mia Fuji, Debbie Meeks, Cheryl Osborne, Donna Pompey, and uh, Dinah Marie Stefani. Thank you so much for your inspiring commitment to helping attract, nurture, retain, support, and promote women in engineering, computing, and technology. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, I want to recognize Southern California Edison for their generous sponsorship of this event and longtime support of our engineering program. So thank you, SCE. All of you here today are part of the solution. We are very grateful for your commitment to erasing a gender imbalance that deprives the engineering field and so society as a whole of a rich source of design skills and innovation. With so many talented, inspiring, innovative, dedicated women coming together to make our ambitious goals a reality, I'd say there's no end in sight to growth of beach engineering. So thank you all once again for being here today and for your interest in these important topics. We appreciate everything you do to advance engineering education and practice and to prepare tomorrow's engineering leaders for careers that maximize economic value and enhance the quality of life enjoyed by our communities and throughout the world. So go engineering and go beach. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Connolly for those words of encouragement. And I'm sure I speak for all of us in the 100 plus women strong that we join you in wanting to create an environment where everyone can thrive. My name is Debbie Meeks and I am, have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, Sydney Kimball, who is the Shell Retail VP for um, the Americas. I have been working with Sydney for the past four years and in my current role as strategic account manager. And I also happen to be a chemical engineering alum from Cal State Long Beach. I first met Sydney just a little over four years ago in Mexico City. And she was giving a talk to some Shell employees in the office. And she left a, a mark on me for a few reasons. First of all, in that meeting, she showed up in this darling dress and these sparkly sandals. And I had never seen another woman dressed like that at Shell before. So it was really fun and refreshing. She also, she spoke about her career and her journey. And she shared intimate details um, of her personal sacrifices that she made. It was very endearing. Um, lastly, she had recently attended a meeting with Shell CEO, and she shared nuggets from that meeting that made us all feel in the room like we were part of this insiders club. I had never got to hear that kind of information before. So it was clear at the time that she was no ordinary leader. And in fact, Sydney happens to be in the top 120 leaders at Shell. That's out of 55,000 employees. It's impressive. A few things I wanna share with you about her. Her undergraduate degree is in computer science. And she actually grew up in Ghana and was raised in Canada. And she has had the opportunity to live in five major cities in Europe and North America in her career. I've heard that Sydney doesn't like to consider herself as brilliant, but uh, the definition of brilliant is exceptionally clever or talented. 
It also is defined as very bright and radiant. I think you're gonna find that Sydney meets the definition very, very well. I mentioned that I've worked for Sydney for the past four years. And um, in this experience, I would say one of the biggest takeaways is her passion for people and her ability to inspire. And it was through that inspiration that I actually joined 100 Plus Women Strong. And I really hope to inspire all of you to get your engineering degrees and join us out here in the workforce. So before I turn it over to Sydney, I just want to remind you that please put questions in the Q&A and we will be asking those of Sydney after her talk and enjoy. Sydney, it's all yours. Thank you, Debbie. Um, welcome everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Um, as Debbie mentioned, uh, I have a college degree from, actually I grew up uh, mostly in Canada and went to University of Calgary um, where I grew up and uh, I took a computer science, I have a degree in computer science uh, with an honors option uh, with management information systems, which would, you know, involve taking a lot of commerce courses. Anyway, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, be here and talk with you all today. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, I'm hoping that I can share a few nuggets that might help you in your career planning um, as you move forward. So with that, uh, maybe you could show my first slide. Um, okay, so I am very, very passionate. <laughs> and. This happens to be a picture of uh, me with uh, Sebastian Vettel at the Montreal Grand Prix. Um, and I was, uh, you know, uh, competing with him um, with Shelby Power. Shelby Power, of course, is um, Shell's premium fuel and something I care a lot about. So you can see that I'm just dressed up as well today um, with my brand, you know? Um, and down on the left-hand side is my family. So that's my husband um, and my two children, um, Kate and Nick. And uh, I picked up an English bloke along the way um, and that's my husband, James. And so I have two stepchildren and uh, they live in England. Um, Kate lives in London and Nick uh, just about an hour southeast of London. Um, and, you know, it's a pleasure uh, mentoring them in their, in their uh, journey as well. And um, they may be of similar ages to some of the people, uh, some of you on the line. So let's talk a little bit about, I'm gonna go back. And so with the next slide, um, one of the questions that I have asked myself uh, so many times is what do I want to do when I grow up? And I thought when I was going to college that, you know, it was a one-time thing, you know, that all of a sudden I was grown up after I finished my college degree and I needed to choose the right job. And there was so much weight on my shoulders thinking about that. Um, and what I found is that I keep asking myself, what do I want to be? Um, and I've been able to change and adapt and say, you know, I don't really like that. And I want to try this. And I'll tell you a little bit more about those choices. Um, but back in uh, grade nine, um, this was in my yearbook. Uh, and my proposed occupation was actually computer science. So um, I didn't know what I was gonna do with a computer science degree, but I knew that it was an up and coming field and I figured that, that it would be good in any job and so on. And as about this age, um, I was doing a lot of babysitting and uh, cleaning in my neighbor's homes and so on. Um, 
And so I thought I'd just give you a little bit of my important career history. Um, I had fairly humble beginnings and my first job, I made $2.85 an hour and I was a chambermaid at a motel um, that I could walk to. I think it took me about a half hour each way. Um, I was 14 and uh, I worked there all summer um, to, uh, yeah. I learned how to change, make a bed properly and change sheets and real important life skills. And then I went on to actually work at the university dining center and I started out watering plants. Um, and yeah, then I was a dishwasher and a short order cook and I worked my way up to being a cafeteria supervisor during high school on I think it was Tuesday night and all day Sunday, or I had an eight hour shift on Sunday and I hired and sometimes even had to fire some of my own friends. Um, but it was a great experience and I, yeah, um, it's part of who you are and, and what happens. And then during college, I um, did a couple of internships um, with, Dome Petroleum, it was an oil company at that time who I think was bought by Amico, um, who then, yeah, merged with Exxon. Um, anyway, I was a database analyst and uh, then I worked for them during the year. And then, you know, I uh, came to the end of college and, okay, what am I going to do? And I had a few different opportunities. Um, one was in banking and another one, um, another one was just with a kind of an IT um, startup firm. And the third one was with Shell. And, you know, I chose Shell because I liked the people during my interview and I thought I could get along well with them. And, um, you know, we choose jobs for maybe the strangest reason, but I started out as a programmer analyst, um, and, uh, yeah, I actually really did enjoy the people. So with the next slide, um, my first message really is, you know, how do you choose? Do you make all these analysis? This, the job I chose actually had the lowest salary, um, of all of my offers, but I felt better about it. So, you know, my message is often you just need to start somewhere and then the rest will follow on and you'll learn and figure things out and figure out what you want to do. Um, and then with my next build, you can see a head and a heart. And I always feel that it's important to to think things through and, you know, you put down your list of pros and cons um, and, uh, you know, all the different considerations, location, salary, um, people that you're working with, the content of the job, um, but you also need to listen to your heart and your heart will, I don't know, my heart often tells me that my head's totally wrong. <laughs> And even in this first job with Shell, I, my heart was saying, but I liked those people that I worked with at, or I inter was interviewed by Shell. I think I could really, you know, enjoy that and get along with them. And so I went with it and I've learned, you know, I've, um, I've been working for Shell for 36 years. That probably sounds ancient and hopefully I don't look ancient. Um, but I, I've worked for them for a long time and I've had at least 10 different careers. I've had totally different jobs and totally different things. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of them. So, but I'm going back to, um, you know, early in my career, um, Shell with the next build, Shell gave us all a book and it was called Company of One. And the key message in this book, Company of One, 
was that each and every one of us need to be a company of one. We, we are a company of one. So I'm the Sydney company and I need to decide with each step in my career, what, you know, what is the right next step and what, what do I think and feel about it? And what's it going to do for my resume or my CV? What's it going to do for people outside? What is it going to look like? Is it going to make me look stronger and better? Um, and what is it going to do um, for just me feeling good? So, you know, we are each a company of one. This is something I'd really like you to to take away because since I read that book I have thought about this so many times and I'm just in the middle of embarking on a new role um, I'm actually as of August 1st going to move to the UK again and um, taking on a new role and once again I was thinking okay what what does this do for me um, and what does it do for my CV and how does it look externally? And is it something that, yeah, I'm gonna feel passionate about and enjoy um, in, my, in my life. So let's move to the next slide. So um, one of my key philosophies has been, you'll, you'll have a lot of people ask you, so what do you wanna do? And you know, where do you want to be five years from now? Or where do you want to be 10 years from now? Um, these are good interview questions. And of course, you have to have an answer. Um, but deep down, sometimes you don't really know. You know, I, I have found in many situations that I don't really know exactly where I want to go. And, you know, I've come up with a good answer in an interview situation or, or whatever. Um, but I just, you need to make choices. You need to put one foot in front of the other um, and go move forward. Now, there are moments in my life where I really knew what I wanted. And then you can go after it and you, you know, have the clarity of that dream and, you know, tell everybody about it. Make it known. Tell them where you want to go. Um but you keep foot, putting one foot in front of the other and then, next slide, yes. And then one day you look back and you've climbed a mountain and you look back and go, wow, this is totally amazing. And um, what a journey it's been. And then you keep putting one foot in front of the other and you get to the next mountain pass and you get to the next um, little bit. So I guess the message here is don't be afraid if you don't know exactly what you want. It's gonna be okay. Just make the best decision that you can for yourself at this point and then move forward and um, yeah. And you know, finish your college degree and then, and then move on. Um, okay, with the next slide. Another thing is be who you are, be your unique self. So I'm, um, I think a lot of people are like this one person when they're with their family and friends and they're a totally different person when they walk into the office or they walk into a business um, environment. And it's hard to be somebody that you're not really, you know, it's, and actually the more that I, I got this message about 15 years ago um, when I went on a shell course and they asked me, um, it, it was actually a lecture, lecture by um, a, a university professor um, in Switzerland. And this professor said, be your unique self to the absolute maximum. So you see a picture here of me um, and you see that I'm wearing cowboy boots and actually they're sparkly cowboy boots. And this was the beginning of my uh, sparkly cowboy fest. Um, I grew up in Calgary, which is a cow town and I'm a cowgirl. And then I 
moved to Houston much later. And Houston is one of those cow towns in um, the United States. Probably it and Dallas in Texas are, are pretty um, cow townish. And uh, these are my Shell V Power boots. Um, but I now have nine pairs of sparkly cowboy boots. And I'll tell you, everybody wants to see my sparkly boots. Like I show up at an event and if I don't have my sparkly, a pair of sparkly boots on, I get so many comments like, what happened? Where I was looking forward to seeing you. Um, you know, how could you not have worn them today? This was my opportunity to see you and so on and so forth. So maybe you could show a show, um, uh, maybe we could move Rebecca just to a picture of me. Um, yes. So you'll notice that I have like red sparkly dangly earrings and I have this sparkles on my watch band and around my wrist and on my feet. Um, I just love sparkles and you know what? I embrace that. And even if somebody thinks maybe I should have an evening gown on with these earrings, um, you know what, they've gotten used to it and it brings a smile on people's face and it puts people in a good mood. And you know, when we're in a good mood, we make better decisions and yeah, you just be who you are to the absolute maximum. Think about it, write it down, write it down right now. Be yourself to the absolute maximum. Okay. Let's go to the slides again and to the next one. Okay. All is really possible. And it's just a matter of what your dream is. So I had many points in my life where, you know, I decided that I wanted to, to go to London and to um, experience international work. Um, actually, let's start with my, my first message is around balance. You need balance in your life. And it's so important Fam for me, it's my family, it's dance and it's fitness. Um, I love yoga. I love, um, working out. Um, and I love dancing for fitness too. And I lost dance in my life for about four years. And then I had a wake up call and I was doing this thing and we were asked to go out into this garden and write down all the things that make us absolutely feel the best that and be right on top of our game and just so on. And dance has been, I have danced through my whole life with Highland dancing and ballet and jazz and tap and I'm a teacher and um, I went into that garden and I thought oh my god I have not done any dancing really other than a wedding or something like that for four years and coming out of that it was a work course and my top priority was to get dance lessons so I was in London I had been looking for country and western dance but of course couldn't find that but I found a ballroom and Latin dance teacher and I started competing and getting as good as I possibly could. Um, and you know, that together with work and my family and fitness are, yeah, if you have those, then two, if one, you know, something's not going so well in one of them, then the others hold you up. So I encourage you to have balance. Then, you know, I have lived in five different cities, um, and these are the cities that I've lived in, um, and I loved all each and every one of them, um, but I was just starting to tell you about my story about London. Um, there was a moment in my life where I just knew that I wanted to be in London, and I told Shell, it was like March or something, and I said, listen, I'm moving to London by the end of the year, and I can go with Shell or I can go alone. My boss told me, well, 
this isn't really the moment that Shell wants you in London and we'd like you to have another assignment before you go. And I said, well, I'm going. And they finally said, okay, you can apply for jobs. And if you get one, great. And if you don't, then we'll replace you. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I got a job. I landed a job, I think it was like October, sometime in October and it started December 1st. Um, and it was a one year assignment. Um, and I ended up working 11 years in London. Um, so that led to one more thing. And so that was a moment where I really knew what I wanted and I made that dream possible. Um, sometimes you don't make it possible. Maybe other people help make it possible, but yeah, let people know what you dream. Okay, so, and then the last build. Um, I started out as a programmer analyst. I went after 12 years and I had been a supervisor and manager. I was the manager of downstream marketing systems uh, for four years. And I said, you know, I kind of need a break. I need to sit back. And I asked Shell to replace me and I went on a leave of absence for three months. And I used that time to really figure out what I wanted to do. And I was thinking of going and working for an IT company like Microsoft or Apple or IBM, um, or to move into Shell's business. And at the end of that three months, there was a job on the board in retail, which is really a fancy name for gas stations and car washes and C stores. So that's what I really do with my day job. I go around to gas stations. Um, and by the way, we have EV at our, uh, we're starting to introduce Shell Recharge at our sites and to evolve them so that we're, um, you know, with the times. Anyway, re I moved in, I actually applied for this job. Um, there were, it was it had a proposed candidate there were a number of applicants and somehow i got they chose me and i got the job so that was my beginning in sales and then i did some jobs in marketing like really quite late in my career i started to do marketing assignments uh, oh my god did i ever love that and then i moved into strategy and i did a little bit of hr and Basically, my message to you guys is you can change your life as you go. So keep putting one foot in front of the other and whatever you dream, I believe you can, you can work and make that happen. So with the next slide, I'm just going to wrap up. Here's my messages. Be yourself to the maximum. Okay. <clears throat> Company of one, you are a company of one. So look after your company yourself. And this is your life. Do what you love, do it often. And if you don't like something, change it. If you don't like your job, quit. If you don't have enough time, stop watching TV. Um, if you're looking for love, the love of your life, stop. They will be waiting for you when you start doing the things that you love stop overanalyzing things life is simple and can be complex all emotions are beautiful when you eat appreciate every last bite open your mind arms and heart to new things new people we are united in our differences ask the next person you see what their passion is and share your inspiring dream with them. Travel often, getting lost uh, will help you find yourself. Some opportunities only come once, seize them. Life is about the people you meet, the things you create with them. So go out and start creating, live your dream, life is short and wear your passion. And in my case, I wear sparkly earrings and yeah, sparkly cowboy boots. So with that, could we, I don't know, do you guys have any questions for me? <laughs>
We definitely have questions for you, Sydney. Uh, we're gonna get to at least a couple of them. Thank you so much. I always love hearing you talk. Um, well, here's one that I think is great. Um, were you ever afraid of not succeeding at your first job after college? You know what? Absolutely. I mean, I was afraid of not succeeding today in this, you know, conference. I went down, I'm visiting my parents right now in Canada, and I went down and said, oh, I'm so nervous about giving this presentation, and I want it to go well, and I want to inspire these young people who are, you know, trying to choose their career. Yes, I mean, everybody has self-doubts and you're nervous and then you get out there and you do it and it's putting one step in front of another and um yeah you know looking for the outcomes you know <laughs> yeah maybe i have three philosophies um and i'll just talk about them in business um they are to follow the money, operate as one team with all the people around you and think differently. And that combination at work really is helpful, really helpful. So Sydney, I wanna ask you this question because I think it's something that a lot of people might be able to relate to. As an aspiring software developer, I've been applying to a bunch of internships. What advice do you have for someone who is struggling with feelings of, I only got the interview because I'm a female or second guessing your skills as a programmer from not passing interviews? Okay. Um, to all you women out there, um, who cares if you got the job because you're a woman? Like, grasp it. Show them that you deserve it. Really. Um, you know what? People get jobs now because they're gay or lesbian, because they're Black, because they're good. And really, we all just want to prove that we're good and that we are brilliant at what we do. So really embrace it and don't worry i mean once people get to know you and work with you they'll realize that you got the job because you're you're you deserved it and you're brilliant sorry but what was the second part of that question let demi me, uh let me see um oh Being unsure yeah so second guessing you know your skills as a programmer yeah. if you don't get the job you know going to the interviews you know how do you regain that confidence yeah you know it's hard you you can go for so many interviews and and you know i i've had the same thing and even as you move on you maybe decide you want a job within a company or whatever and you're not successful and I, I don't think they're saying they aren't, they aren't ever saying that you're not good. They're just saying maybe they need a different um, type of personality or they need a different skill set or whatever for that job. So, you know, be strong in yourself. You are great. Think of all the things that you've achieved and all of the, you know, all of the computer programs that you've written and all the tests that you've passed and aced and um, all of the life challenges that you've met and overcome and know that there will be a moment that, that somebody goes, you're the best person for this role. You're the one who's gonna get this and they'll want you. So don't try not to doubt yourself. We all do it, but try not to. So I know we have to move on. I, we have a lot of questions that it would be fun to ask, but I do want to end with people do enjoy your unique self. We all do. Um, we do get the question, where do you shop? Your outfit is on point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that, Sydney, I think unless you have some final words you want to give, we're going to turn it back to Jennifer. Okay, you guys. Don't forget 
really don't forget. You're a company of one. You are a unique person that is brilliant, really brilliant. And please bring that whole brilliant self um, to your job and or to your interview or to whatever it is that you're doing. And it will pay out. Leverage your strengths. Build on them. Concentrate on them. Okay. I wish you all the best. Okay. Wow. With that, thank you, thank you so much, Sydney, for sharing your experiences. That, that was a relevant conversation, regardless of where uh, any of us are in our journey. And thank you so much for sharing yourself. Um, there really was a long list of, of questions. So hopefully over time, we'll get those answered either through the 100 plus women strong or folks can reach out. So I'd also like to thank Debbie and Shell uh, for all of the support and bringing Sydney to us. Uh, great job. So uh, I'd like to recognize Southern California Edison as our workshop seminar uh, sponsor. And with that, the webinar portion